James, we're a nation of multitaskers by the sound of things. We are indeed, um, but we're also a nation of TV lovers. And uh, as you said, um, we're coming back into the living room more than ever before to watch TV. And that's been driven by better quality, bigger screens, uh, HD, um, a better viewing experience. Um, but at the same time, we're bringing all these digital gadgets with us, like our smartphones and our tablet devices. So half of us now own a smartphone, a quarter own a tablet device, uh, and we're using these to do other things while we're watching TV. Yeah, fascinating, isn't it, to get that breakdown? And it's and it, also fascinating, Lucy, that modern technology is kind of going back to the 1950s in a weird way, and we're all kind of watching together. That's quite nice, isn't I it? I mean, we're, we are relational creatures, so we like doing things with other people. It makes us feel safe and it makes us feel secure. But at the same time, because of that technology, we're probably also very distracted. So we might actually all be in the same room, nominally watching the same screen, but half of us are on our mobile phones, some of us are tweeting about it, and some of us could actually be watching a completely separate program on our iPads with those headphones on. So in terms of relational bonding, I'm not quite so certain that this is actually a real sign of improvement. I suppose, James, it means our concentration levels must be all over the place, because you can't really watch a TV program and be streaming a film and really giving it all your concentration to both at the same time. Well, that's, not, that's not necessarily the case because, as you said, a quarter of us are doing what you call media meshing, which is that we're engaging with the program at the same time as watching it. And we, we may be tweeting messages or sending texts or emails to our friends. A great example of this is, is during the Wimbledon final with uh, Andy Murray, where over one million people sent two and a half million tweets. And so people are more actively engaging with the program in order to do this because they, they're engaged with communicating. I suppose they're more actively engaged with each other. That's a sign of social bonding, isn't it? Yes, we're engaged with other people who might be watching the programme, but we're not actually having face-to-face -face communication. So we mustn't ever imagine that this is a complete replacement. It could actually be enhancing the experience. Let's see how many tweets are being sent at the end of this little snippet. But in, in terms of actual interaction around the television screen, I'm not entirely convinced that everyone is really engaging in the same actual process. So James, just briefly, what headaches or, or opportunities is give for broadcasters, do you think? Well, broadcasters are already aware of this, and um, there are all sorts of examples. I mean, even Antiques Roadshow has an app uh, nowadays, but the, the key is, is, is for broadcasters to, to recognize that people want to engage with the program, uh, they want to talk about it. We used to have these water cooler moments the day after yes. the programs. Now it's all happening in real time. So what happens in the Beresford household? So there's a lot of tweeting that goes on, but there's also a little bit of protocol. After seven o'clock, perhaps just watching ah. one thing alone. And James, very briefly, hard, hard question to answer, but in 50 years' time, how will our TV viewing look like in this country? I think our TV viewing will still be healthy. We watch four hours of TV a, a, a day. It's an ingrained okay. habit in this country. Thank you guys very much for joining me. That's it from us.